Nothing really new here, folks, just a clouser minnow tied with crab fur rather than the traditional bucktail, along with a slightly different tie-in method to produce a bulkier head on the fly. I begin with a 2 aught Dairiki number 930 saltwater hook. After getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of my tying vise, I load a bobbin with a spool of red UTC 140 denier. Start your thread on the hook shank, leaving a hook eye plus space behind the eye. Take a few wraps rearward before snipping the tag off close. You want to form a nice little thread pad on which the dumbbell eyes will rest. For the eyes, I'm going to use white, size large, non-toxic dumbbell eyes that are one quarter of an inch in diameter. Place the eyes on top of the hook shank over the tie-in pad and take a few cross wraps to lightly secure them. Everybody seems to have their own method for securing clouser eyes. I like to go over either side like so, kind of in a mini tug of war back and forth. After a few wraps, I'll start making circles like this that help to compress the previous wraps so everything tightens up. Leave your thread hanging immediately behind the eyes. It's a good idea to look straight down the hook shank to make sure the eyes aren't tilted to one side or the other. UV Cure Resin will really help to ensure the eyes stay where they're supposed to without rotating around the hook shank. An ample drop applied to the crossbar of the dumbbell should run down and soak into the thread wraps. Then, a shot with the UV torch will cure the resin to create an extremely robust connection. For a bit of flash, snip four, and only four, strands of gold crystal flash free from the hank. I think many people really overdo it in terms of flash. Secure the material behind the dumbbell eyes, doubling a short length back and binding it down so there's no way it can pull free. With the material well secured, advance your tying thread around the eyes and up the shank, leaving just a little bit of space behind the hook eye. For craft fur, I like the stuff that has longish fibers. Here I'm using off-white. A toothbrush works wonders at coaxing this stuff around to where you want it. In this case, I've teased up approximately a one inch square. Craft fur is a well-known scissor duller, so don't use your good tying scissors. These guys are fairly cheap and do a phenomenal job. Also, the spring action really comes in handy. Snip that one inch square off close to the hide, then roll the square into a clump. A flea comb with two rows of teeth is the best tool I found for removing the short under fur from the butt ends. I suppose these dense fibers help to keep a craft warm during the cold winter months. Anyway, flip the clump around so you're holding the butt ends between the fingertips of your right hand. Then use your super cool new scissors to snip them off square, while retaining most of their length. Push the butts up against the eyes and take a couple of thread wraps with your left hand. Once the fur is in place, you can switch back to your normal way of wrapping thread. Continue taking wraps all the way up to the back edge of the hook eye before leaving your tying thread in the middle of the wraps. Rotate your vise or reorient your hook so the bottom side of the shank faces up. Then, tease up another one inch square of craft fur, this time in medium olive. When you've got it looking good, snip it off close to the hide. Once again, roll the fur into a manageable clump. The more under fur you can clean out, the easier it will be to tie in the fur. Again, snip the butt ends off square and then get them tied in, this time on the underside of the hook shank. Don't be afraid to really crank the wraps on to bind the fur down. With everything secured, relocate your tying thread to right behind the dumbbell eyes. Pull up and split the fur you just tied in so they're equal clumps on either side of the hook. Then, while pulling the fur rearward, take wraps of tying thread to bind it down. You can then flip the hook over and do the same with the white craft fur. Pull back on the material with as much tension as possible before you take wraps to secure it. You should end up with a nice bullet head on the fly and red thread wraps that sort of look like gills. After you have the fur clumps locked down, you can do a four or five turn whip finish and snip or cut your tying thread free. Check the length of the crystal flash at the rear of the fly. You want it to be just slightly longer than the craft fur. 
Snip the excess off if necessary. Once again, reach for the UV Cure resin and apply a significant coat to the thread wraps all the way around. While pulling the fur back, give that resin a really healthy shot with the UV light. You want the resin to soak in a little bit, thus channeling the craft fur rearward. Although not entirely necessary, I like to fill in the little red cheeks and around the back edge of the hook eye in order to increase durability and add a bit of shine. I know the question on everybody's lips, will the craft fur foul in the hook bend? And the answer is yes, occasionally. But unfouling it's easy, and I believe the motion of the craft fur, along with the increased durability, make it well worth the effort. As with all clousers, this one rides with the hook point up and moves with that wonderful clouser jigging motion. <laughs>